This is a surprise live. I did tell the ladies in my group that I was going live today, but I didn't tell anyone else. So, I am probably going to get started. I might not wait for anyone to hop on. But if you're catching this on the replay, just let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching live, hello. Just post a comment saying hi or something like that so that I can greet you properly. Thank you for joining me. And um, again, if you're watching the replay, just hashtag replay. Let me know where you're watching from. Hey, Tiff, how are you? I haven't talked to you in a while. Thanks for joining. So tonight, um, this live is actually inspired by a conversation I had with my bestie earlier. And um, we're just talking about some of the um, issues that you encounter in dating and everything seemed like it was falling under the hood of expectations and the expectations that we have as a woman who is in the dating world and trying to meet men versus what we end up getting, what men um, respond well or don't respond well to, how they can sometimes um, disappear on you when it seems like things are going well. So I just wanna talk a little bit about that um, so let's see, I took some notes so that I would kind of know where to begin. So the first thing that I want to touch on when it comes to dating is that, um, what inspires a man to want to be around you and want to pursue you more is that he enjoys being in your presence and he also notices when you're not there, that he doesn't feel as good as he does when he's around you. So basically, being in your company has to feel better than his solitude, okay? So that is a key to remember because a lot of women don't, oh, my dog is knocking to go outside and he is not gonna stop. So I'll just keep talking. A lot of women forget that this inspires a man to pursue you and when he doesn't feel inspired he's just going to fall back because dating is work for men um pursuing courting trying to win over or woo a woman is work so He's not going to be inspired to continue doing that for an extended amount of time if it's not pleasurable for him. So, of course, you know, initially they're pursuing, you know, they, you look good or they just want to get to know you. But they are going to check out how does it feel as they continue to spend time with you? Do they feel more masculine in your presence? Are they enjoying getting to know you? Are they enjoying talking to you? Um are you easy to be with? Okay. Are you feminine, which inspires that masculine um, man in them, those masculine traits to kind of come to the surface? Does he feel like there's a little bit of competition with you? And I'll give you an example. So if you're someone who is really into like the friendly banter, I would say to watch that. Because there is a line that you can cross where it goes from being um, you know, friendly little jabs and, you know, sarcasm and being funny to actually coming off as adversarial. And my best friend, she actually told me that she got some feedback from a guy that, you know, he said, have you ever, um, have you ever been, you know, treated right? Because the way you responded to something I've said to you gives me the impression that you haven't. So, She's giving off that impression that perhaps she's not used to typical decent treatment. And what that might tell a man is that you're damaged, that he's encountering you and on the first couple of dates, 
you already seem to be coming with some baggage and that there are things that he might have to unpack, um, things you might hold him responsible for that occurred in your previous relationships, that you're a bit jaded, that maybe you're bitter, or you have a chip on your shoulder, or whatever the case might be. Um, and that sounds like work. And let's just, you know, keep it all the way real. A man is not going to be all invested in you from the beginning. That takes time. That grows over time. I will use my own relationship for an example. So I met my fiance in 2015. And I will say honestly that within the last year to year and a half, I've seen a major difference in how committed he is to our relationship and how he treats me, how he considers what I think and want even the amount of vulnerability he allows within himself in terms of loving me and being committed to the relationship, I believe that's ultimately um, a big part of why he ended up proposing. Because, you know, for the longest, I was being the model girlfriend, you know, from the minute we said, okay, we're in a relationship, I was all in, jumped in with both feet, doing everything I could to, you know, show him that I was a great partner, being super supportive. But that's another thing that women do is we think that because we're with a guy that he's going to be fully committed like a husband from the get go. We think, OK, you're cutting off all other women. You're not going to look at any other women. There's not going to be any hiccups. There's not going to be any loose ends to tie up. You're going to always want to spend time with me. You're going to protect and provide and show up and give your all and just because he likes you doesn't mean that he's at that level of devotion. That takes time. And I think we can get unrealistic with once we exchange those agreements of, okay, we're exclusive or, or okay, we're in a relationship. That automatically means the man's going to show up akin to the way a husband would. There definitely is a difference in a man's mind between dating casually, dating exclusively or being in a committed relationship, and then being engaged and being married. They know that there is a higher level of commitment that they're called to. And they reach this place typically slowly. If you find a man who is talking about love and wanting to be with you and all that, and it's very early on, we typically call that love bombing. So why would someone be love bombing you? Uh, maybe they're trying to manipulate you. Maybe they've caught on to that you are someone who um, is needy. Men can kind of smell that desperation in a woman where you are needy, where it's been a while for you, where you don't have other suitors and this interaction with him is a big deal to you and you're really looking for something from it. So men can capitalize on that. They can totally sense. I mean, it's the same way that I don't know if you all have ever heard of those Nigerian love scams, but those don't happen to all women. We may all get spam messages from men in other countries who are trying to, you know, sell us a dream and say, oh, you know, I work in this country and something catastrophic happened to me and my family and I don't have any money and, oh, honey, you're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I know people personally who have fallen victim to those scams and sent money and spent time and thought they had a full-blown relationship and it was all because that man was able to sense that desperation in a woman. So be careful of men who are really pushing for a serious relationship early on. It takes time to get to know people. It does. It takes time. Um, I feel like even now, almost six years in, I'm still getting to know my fiance. I mean, people are like onions. There's just many layers and there's a lot that you're not going to see or know until you experience it. And I'm sorry, I need to look at my comments. I was flowing and I didn't um, acknowledge the comments. So Gigi said, hey, girl, hey, hey, girl, hey. And uh, Tiffany said, man, I can feel the desperation when I see that. Yeah, so you want to be careful. And that's something else we talked about, too, is when you're coming out of a bad breakup or a bad relationship, a lot of women are love starved. So you have been in a relationship where you haven't been getting your needs met for a while. And as a result, 
you are deprived of that male attention. You don't necessarily feel beautiful or important or feel like yourself or you may feel a little hopeless around love. And when you meet somebody who shows even the slightest interest in you, some women jump all over that like like with koala hands, like they are just on it. They're latched onto the guy. Um, after one or two good conversations or after one date, they're really like envisioning a future with this guy. And you really have to think about the fact that you don't know him yet and that it is way too early to be getting sold. It is way too early to be invested. You really have to have a more casual attitude when dating. Okay. Because, um, the partner that you're going to want is going to show consistency over time. It's not going to be, um, he blows you out of the water in the beginning and then it's happily ever after. You won't know that it's tried and true and that he's really all in and really committed to you until you observe that consistency over time. And there is no substitute for time. You have to allow time to pass. So I would say that is one of the, the top keys to avoiding um, getting your heart broken way too early or getting too invested in a man. And the flip side of that is when you're invested too early, it feels like pressure to the man. The man feels pressured. He feels that desperation and that is a turn off. Um, he also feels like you have a lot of expectations and that's what the title of this video is about. So um, you've probably heard it said that boundaries are for you. They're not for other people. So I believe it's important for you to have your non-negotiables already have those worked out. You know, like I don't date men that um, are married, which is a great one. <laughs> I don't date men that are married. I don't date men that are in relationships. I don't date men that sell drugs. I don't. Some women say I don't date men with children. You know, whatever the case may be, um, know that the more non-negotiables you have, you are narrowing the pool of men that are available to you. So when you start getting into physical attributes, um, socioeconomic status, things like that, you are making the pool of men that are, are available to you or that you're willing to consider smaller. So just keep that in mind. And then also most of us are trying to date people that are local to us. So think about who's local to you, who's in your community and how many men fit the bill of who you're interested in, in your community. So when you enter into a dating situation and you already have told yourself a story and you have expectations of if this man really likes me, this is how he will treat me. If he doesn't do that, you're going to be upset. And you may end up writing off someone who could have been a potential partner for you. He just wasn't jumping in with both feet on the first or the second date. I mean, generally, you know, if a man is interested in you, he will continue to reach out. He will continue to initiate conversations and dates. And um, a coach I worked with in the past said in the beginning, you kind of want to follow the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time, let him initiate the contact. 20% of the time, it's okay for you to reach out here and there. But a lot of women aren't able to reach out and initiate contact without getting upset if the man doesn't respond quickly or within the time frame that she thinks he should. And that is another way that you get your feelings hurt because you reached out with an outcome in mind, like, hey, I just want to say good morning, wish you a good day or whatever. And he doesn't write back all day and then later texts you and says he was busy. Now you feel some kind of way. Now your feelings are hurt and you're telling a story around why he did that, what kind of person he is. And again, this is all based on your expectations. If you lean back and stay in your feminine energy and let a man pursue you, you won't run into that so much because what you really want to find out is how interested he is. And if you lean back, you will find that out naturally because if he's interested, he will pursue. If he is really wanting to see where things go or really wanting to talk to you, he will reach out. And another key thing that I always advise women to do is to date more than one man at one time. So going back to what I was talking about earlier about coming out of a breakup where you've been single a long time and you are love starved, um, you get hooked on somebody, on the first guy that comes along or um, a particular man when you don't have uh, what they call a, a rotation of guys that you date. So 
I always advise the women that I coach to keep a full rotation. And the reason being, you will not be so desperate and love starved if you're getting male attention regularly. A lot of women have an aversion. Hi, Tenny, how are you? Thanks for joining. Uh, a lot of women have an aversion to dating multiple men at one time. Let me tell you one of the reasons why that's so important is men are natural competitors. Okay, so first of all, who wants to compete for someone that no one, it, no one else is interested in or wants or is after? If you notice when you're on dating apps, a lot of men will eventually get to, so how many other people are you talking to? Or have you gone out on any other dates? Or, you know, they kind of want to assess what's going on. And we think that they will judge us if we say, oh, I'm dating other guys. So we'll often lie or downplay it or whatever. And I'm not saying you have to spill all the beans and put all your business out there. But you do need to have more than one male attention around you if you are not in a committed relationship where your needs are being met. Point blank, period. There's no reason why you need to take yourself off the market and uh, be off to the side on hold, on layaway for someone that's not showing up. You are cutting yourself off from the opportunity to get the best man for you who is stepping up and ready and willing to pursue and claim you now. Also, the man that you're interested in is not energetically being activated to step up and claim you because who needs to claim something that is on hold for them? If you put yourself on layaway, you've already claimed yourself for him. There is no reason for him to pursue, to initiate, to do anything to win you over, to win your heart, to stake his claim because you've already done it. And that is a man's job. So as a woman who's valuable, woman who is out there is available for men to meet, to court, whatever. You need to keep your options open. And that doesn't mean that you can't um, go on dates with someone regularly or enjoy them, but you want to look at who's stepping up for you consistently, who's pursuing you consistently. That is who gets the most of your time by default. If a man is not in front of you, if he's not on the phone with you, you should not be thinking about him. You focus on who's in front of you. You focus on who's on that app. You focus on who's calling, who's texting. You focus on what's going on in your own life. Do not let your imagination run away with you thinking about a man that's not in front of you right now because you're not there. That's how you get ahead of a man in a relationship and when you get ahead of a man, inevitably, you end up trying to pull him along and pull him into commitment. And that's not how you do it. As feminine women, our power lies with influence. How can we influence a man to want to pursue and commit to us? We create such an intoxicating, enticing, alluring, peaceful, beautiful space that he wants to be in all the time, which is in your presence, you create that, then he craves being in your presence more than he craves being alone or being with other women. It's just that simple. That's just what it comes down to. You cultivate that kind of attraction. And you'll say, okay, Ashley, how do I do that? Okay, so first of all, you can't create peace with somebody else if you're not at peace with yourself. So you need to deal with your issues. I always advise women I work with, in addition to coaching, to pursue therapy because there's just things you're going to get into, deep childhood stuff with your therapist that um, you need to reserve time with them to unpack. There may be, uh, not that I'm saying anyone necessarily has a diagnosis or anything like that, but there may be things around that to explore. You may have some PTSD from traumatic relationships or from things in childhood. You may have some anxiety that you need to address. And coaching helps, but I always recommend that you actually see a licensed mental health professional aside from your coaching, because your coaching is more focused on you getting the results you want. And your therapy is more focused on unpacking those issues that are impacting your mental health and getting you to a healthy place mentally so that you have all of your energy and resources available to put into a positive future for yourself. So... You cannot be anyone else's, um, I, I don't like the saying 
be a man's peace because a man needs to be his own peace. But what you don't want to be is someone that takes away from his peace. If he's good when he's alone, if he's good with his boys, if he's mostly good at work, most of us, our jobs are kind of stressful, but if he's able to manage that, okay, but then when he gets around you, it's stress and strife and arguing or contention or you're unknowingly in your masculine energy and challenging him or pulling at him or constantly asking for things, um, that ends up being off-putting. Unless the man is looking to be, you know, a sugar daddy or whatever, which, you know, happens. But as we all know, sugar daddies want some sugar. So if you're not prepared to, to give that, then that may not be the situation you want. But that's another discussion for another time. But um, having a peaceful, calm essence about yourself will automatically set you aside from other women who are high strung or who go on dates and they already have a chip on their shoulder. They're already talking about what went wrong in previous dates or how other men have come at them. Do not walk into your dates with negative stories about other people. Just like you wouldn't walk into a job interview and complain about your last boss or how much you hate your previous job. It's just not a good look. You want to come in as someone who is not toting an airport full of baggage. You know, like you, you want to come in with clean, clear energy and just say, I'm here to enjoy your presence. I'm here to share a meal. I'm here to get to know you. Keep it light. Keep it enjoyable. Um, another way that you can cultivate that attraction is to actually be interesting, have um, things going on that when he asks, you do have something to say or share something you're passionate about, something that when you talk about it, it's going to light you up. Um, and it's okay if you're a mom, if this is your kids, but I always recommend, and I just did a video, um, I didn't post it on the main page, so it was in my, um, Flex Your Femininity group, but I just did a video earlier today on, as a mom, you need to have your own separate identity. Do not make your kids your everything because number one, that's a lot of pressure on them to make sure mom is good emotionally. That's not their job. It's not their job to fill in the void that's left in your life by not having a partner. It's not their job to make sure that you're good emotionally. It's not their job to water their life down or condense it so that they can stay around you so that you have something to do and someone to take care of. It's your job to take care of you. There are so many women who throw themselves into motherhood as opposed to doing the work that they need to do to be able to have a happy, healthy relationship with a man because the work is too hard. It's easier to be a mom. It's easier to be by yourself. Yes, you have those lonely moments, but I think what it will happen is it won't hit you until later when your kids grow up, when they go off and have their own life, when you realize you've spent 20, sometimes 20 plus years focusing and making the focal point of your life, your children, and now they've grown up and they are entitled to and deserve to have their own life, to spread their wings, to leave the nest, to go on and do what they got to do, meet their partners, create their families. And you have done no work on yourself. You do not have a partner. You had to raise your children by yourself, which, um, you know, not that it's intentional, but it also does kind of rob them of having that experience of seeing their mom in something happy and healthy in the home to model a, a relationship that they can aspire to, or at least use as a blueprint and also having that positive male influence in the home. So they've seen mom struggle and work hard and, um, sacrifice everything, which, you know, it's nice. It's noble, but there's another way. You can still be a good mom and not make your kids your everything. You are still a woman at the end of the day. You're a woman first. You're an individual first. You need to take care of you. You need to heal what's going on in you. You need to be honest with yourself about your need and desire for companionship that is normal and healthy. And you need to be willing to do something about it if that truly is a desire of your heart. Be honest about it and be willing to do what it's going to take Pursue that. Do not make everything about your children. Do not stop living your life and just go to work to clock in and clock out to pay the bills and feed the babies. 
because life is happening. Your life is happening. You will wake up and be 20 years older and be trying to get back out there and pull a cell and get your groove back. And it's going to be a struggle for you. Don't do that to yourself. The best thing you can give your children is a happy mom, a healthy mom, a mom that is giving from her overflow, not running on E and ultimately low key feeling some resentment because you do everything for everybody else, but nothing for yourself. And you're not taking care of yourself and your personal needs aren't being met. Your kids cannot meet your personal needs. Your kids cannot meet your needs for companionship. And it's unfair to put that expectation on them because there are kids who are not going off living their life because they're worried about mom. I can't leave mom alone. What's mom going to do? Or you create this codependent relationship where they feel like they can't spread their wings because you're doing everything for them because you'd rather take care of them than take care of you. Let that one simmer. You'd rather take care of your kids than take care of yourself. Because taking the lid off of our issues, unpacking what we've endured, unpacking our experiences, our mental um, feeling, even some of the hurt that we've bypassed because I got to be there for these kids. I don't have time. I don't have time to feel that. I don't have time to delve into those emotions. That is scary. But just know that those things don't go away. They wait for you. When you stuff them in the closet and lock the door, they stay in there until you give them the attention and you give them permission to come up to the surface to be healed and you release it. No, you don't have to stay in your place of despair. A lot of us are afraid to go certain places emotionally because we feel like, you know, it's a, it's a primal type of fear that, oh, I'm going to die. If I let myself feel that level of hurt, if I go there, I'm going to die. I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to slip into this dark pit of sadness and despair and I'm going to cry and I don't want to feel that. And I'm, I'm going to feel all the pain of what I went through in my childhood, what I've gone through in my failed relationships, what I've gone through in abuse, what I've gone through with sexual abuse, what I've gone through seeing my, my parents and those unhealthy relationships, ancestral stuff, even stuff from past lives that you can carry into this one in your vibe. We are afraid to go there. But what you don't realize is that that holds you back, that you not going there is the block that prevents you from having everything that you want to have and accomplishing, attracting, creating everything that you're desiring. The path to those things involves looking at healing and releasing those blocks and those things that have been holding you back, that baggage, um, those limiting thoughts, those stories you're telling yourself, um, the lies that you've been believing, we have to look at it. But when you look at it with the purpose of knowing I'm going to release it, the reason why I'm taking the lid off of this is so that God can clean it out for me, so that I can be made new, so that he can patch me up, restore me, make me good as new. This is why I'm doing this. You will be okay. If you get someone to support you, through that process, even better. A professional, a tribe of women who are also doing the same thing, that makes that a lot easier. But bottom line is your brain is programmed to believe certain things and the things that you believe influence your behavior and how you show up in relationships. What you do not want is to have a relationship that could have flourished had you behaved differently. I always say, if I know I've done everything I could and I showed up as my best self and it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to be. Sometimes it's not necessarily that it's not meant to be, but you weren't bringing your best self to the table. You can't control if the other person brings their best self, but I do know that your best self inspires another's best self to come out. And we also know if we have made a concerted effort mm -hmm. to bring our best self to the table, or if we just kind of feel like, yeah, you should take me as I am. Like, I mean, of course, no one's going to say you have to be perfect before you can have love, but it's appreciated 
that you deal with your stuff and not bring it into a relationship for your partner to have to sort through and deal with because it's going to come up. And there's going to be things that your partner's bringing to the table, that you're bringing to the table, and things that are created in the relationship that need to be healed. Relationship work is deeply personal and it requires a lot of work to make a relationship work. It requires a lot of attention, a lot of effort, a lot of being willing to grow and being willing to do hard things and being willing to overcome negative feelings and reach out and be vulnerable. If you can't do that alone, how are you going to do that in a relationship? Because that is exactly what's going to be required of you. Your partner is actually going to bring out even more of those things in you that need to be healed because that's what they're there for. Your partner Who you are attracted to and who you attract is actually a mirror. Your partner shows you the unhealed parts of yourself that you need to look at. The same ways they trigger you, that stuff that you actually had going on prior to them that you needed to heal. And that's part of why you're attracted to them subconsciously because they will bring up your fear of abandonment. They will bring up your negative self-image and how you don't accept yourself, how you don't acknowledge your worth, how you don't take care of yourself. Those things will come up. You think you want a relationship. You think you're ready for a partner. If you're not willing and ready to look at those things as a single woman, relationship's going to eat you up and it's going to break your heart even more because all that's going to do is add to your story of another person rejecting me, another person not coming through for me, another person who I gave my all to and they didn't return it, they are simply reflecting back to you what you need to heal. And when you are able to show up as your best self, you inspire their best self to come to the surface. I have personally gone through the trenches and done some of this work and seen miraculous results. I'm talking like a man who was very averse to commitment suddenly Or sometimes it's not suddenly, sometimes it's over time, but sometimes it is suddenly um, feeling inspired to make a relationship official suddenly or sometimes not suddenly deciding I'm going to cut off other women or I'm going to do this or do that to honor you or I'm going to start investing in our future. I'm going to do the things you've been asking before, but you've stopped asking and now you're taking care of yourself. And you know what? Now as a man, I'm going to start taking care of myself. You know, not because you've been telling me to, but because I'm watching you and I'm feeding off of your vibe and I'm seeing how you're taking care of your emotions and healing your past and addressing your issues. And you're showing up more calm. You're showing up more even keel. You're showing up with a better vibe in general. And they like that. They are naturally drawn to that. People want to know more when they see a shift in you and it makes them treat you differently. Don't think it's going to happen after one day. This has to be a journey that you are committed to walking and it's not about when you get results. We all want results fast, but it has to be something that you are committed to doing until you get what you want and even beyond that to maintain it. That's why I say, if you're unwilling to do the work now, then Lord help you. When a relationship comes, because it's already doomed for failure before you even start, because you have to do your personal work and relationship. You might as well get a head start on it so you don't attract someone who is mirroring the wounded part of you from the get go and your relationship is up and down and toxic and volatile from the get go because you attracted them from a broken place. You attracted them from a place that didn't love yourself. You attracted them from a place of, like I said, you have a chip on your shoulder, you're bitter, you're emotionally unavailable. So you attract a partner who's emotionally unavailable. You have certain fears and they mirror those exact fears back to you because that is the frequency that you're on. It's just like a radio station. You are on 99.1 and... You attract somebody who's also on 99.1. You're afraid of being abandoned. Guess what? Abandonment is their specialty. Congratulations. You got to address that (laughs) because that doesn't just change. You don't just attract somebody healthy who's going to 
heal all of the broken parts of you. Because here's what happens. And maybe you can relate to this. If you can, let me know in the comments. Sometimes we meet someone who seems healthy, but guess what? We think they're boring. We think they're boring. We're not attracted to them. Um, we friend zone them. Um, there's just no spark. There's no chemistry. Or we self-sabotage it because we don't feel worthy of being treated well. We don't feel worthy of a relationship that's not up and down like a roller coaster and full of drama. We don't feel good not having to win a man over because we're used to doing that. We've always had to win men over. We've always had to show them and tap dance and perform and, and prove to them that we were worthy to wife. When you are used to that, that's what you want, that's what's familiar to you, and that's what you attract. So a healthy man, you will actually feel repelled by, and the unhealthy man, you'll be like, mm-hmm, yeah, him. That's the one. The one that didn't call me back after the first date for three days, that's the one. I, I'm going to show him. I, I bet I can win him over. I know he said he wasn't really interested in a relationship, but I bet I can change that. A lot of times what you're trying to do is you're trying to play out a dynamic that's been present long before that person came into your life. You're trying to prove to yourself that you deserve to be chosen. So you find yourself trying to win over people instead of being naturally drawn to the people who are choosing you just because you're you, who are naturally and organically your people and drawn to you and not even looking for you to do anything. They don't need you to fix their life. They don't need you to, to um, be their mother or be their therapist. They just want to enjoy you. And when you are used to having to perform or used to having to basically do things in order to get love, you don't feel like you are inherently deserving of love. So you have to, I'm trying to think of the word, you have to, um, I don't know, I can't think of another way to say it other than do things to deserve love. That's who you will attract. You will attract someone who needs to be won over. And if you happen to come across a man who isn't like that, you won't be attracted to him. Or if you are, you will sabotage it. So there is no way around the inner work because you are in every relationship that you are a part of. So even if you got Mr. Right, the most wonderful man in the world, you are still a part of the relationship. And it is true. Different women bring out different things in men. And something I was telling my friend today is what you don't want is to reflect and think, you know, it could have worked out with Ricky, but I didn't, I wasn't willing to do my work. You don't want to look back with regret or you don't want to see that so-and-so moved on after you and got in a committed relationship that ended up leading to marriage or whatever. And it was someone you really liked, but you just couldn't figure out why the relationship wasn't working. Were you doing your inner work? Were you bringing your best self to the table? I mean, it's just that simple. When you can say you did your best and you were really trying, you were really putting in effort, then you can leave everything on the table. You can walk away if it doesn't work out and say, you know what, it just, that just wasn't the one. We had a, a good time together. We had a great experience. It was a lesson for me, you know, but that's not my person. You know, I'm, I'm meant to be in something else or with someone else and you can release them with love. But when you look back and you have regrets and you, I mean, what happens is you, you replay over in your mind all the things you could have done differently, all the times people told you, all the times you saw posts or videos like this one and you were like, that's me, but man, maybe I can get by. Maybe I don't have to, you know, really go to therapy. That's not that important. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm okay. I, I, I don't think that applies to me. Sis, if, if you've been single for several years and you don't want to be, 
there's something to address there because there's men. There's men out there and for some reason, y'all are not connecting. I don't believe that there's just one person for everybody. I believe we can make it work with a variety of different people, all dependent on what we want and who we choose. So you have a lot of options out there. There are a lot of men who you could make a life with out there. Number one, you have to believe that. You have to believe that there is a surplus, that there is quality and quantity out there for you to choose from. Because if you have a scarcity belief, then you'll feel like, oh, well, I got to work hard and love is hard to find and get. And not really. But when you are not healed, when you are bringing baggage to the table, it is hard to partner with people. It's hard for people to tolerate each other when you are bringing drama, when you acting crazy, or when you are attracted to people who bring drama or who act crazy because there's an unhealed part of you that is drawn to that. But when you get two emotionally healthy, stable people, it's quite easy to partner and create a harmonious life that's enjoyable. It's not that difficult. But again, what frequency are you on? Are you on 99.1 and you need to be on 105.9? Then you need to do the work to get there. You will know what frequency you're on by what you're attracting. Because there's usually a common thread in who we are attracting, who we keep, show, who we keep seeing show up in our lives. The type of men um, I'm sure if you can think back to the last few people that you've dated, there was there was a, a pattern there. There were certain qualities that they all had, certain things that they all did, different ways they triggered you. They have something in common. That tells you where you're at. And that points you in the direction of, again, doing your work. Because blaming them, blaming the dating pool, blaming the dating apps, blaming... Um, men in general, whatever, that's not going to help you. Time is of the essence. Another thing is when I was manifesting love, I had a specific man in mind that I wanted. The one that's actually upstairs right now. That is who I wanted. And I was very serious about getting him. But what I will tell you, I'll get more into, you know, manifesting a specific person in a different video. Cause that's a, that's a whole nother Lots of stuff to talk to you about in regards to that. But what I will say is you have to be willing to do what it is going to take. You cannot be so emotionally unstable that you are swayed or that your hope gets lost easily. There were times where he and I weren't talking for months. And then it was slow, like I said, to get to the point that it is now. And you can't lose faith. You can't lose hope because he had personal work to do. I had personal work to do. And once you get in the relationship, that need continues and it actually intensifies because now it's not just your issues. It's your issues, your partner's issues and the relationship issues. And then don't have kids because then that is blended family issues, parenting issues. And if you have extended family, if you have jobs, if you have money, there's all kind of stuff that are factors that contribute to the health and harmony of your relationship. You have to be able to manage that or you'll crumble underneath it. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So in picking a specific guy, I told myself I was willing to do what I needed to do and that I would keep doing it until it worked. So it can't be, I'm going to just do this for a month. And then if it don't happen, then I'm, you know, I'm giving up. If you're committed, you're committed, period. And you don't know that you're fully committed until it don't look like you're going to get what you want until you're feeling discouraged. I would say, you know, if he's not married to somebody else, then you keep at it. You keep in, not reaching out, not trying to throw it at him or anything, because all the work I was doing was energetic and I was not reaching out to him. He reached out to me after we went through our period of separation where we were no contact. I was doing the work in my journal. I was doing my meditation. I was doing my rituals. I was under the full moon. I had my crystals. I was praying. I was doing everything I needed to do. And then one day I get the text and the rest is history. 
Now, I ain't going to say it's been easy, but no relationship is really easy. Even if it starts easy, you're going to hit patches. You're going to have times where it's coasting and everything's good, and then you're going to have times where it's rough, and it's gonna you're going to have more times where it's rough if you haven't done your personal work. So again, do yourself a favor and do that. But something else that I wanted to um, touch on is if there's a specific person you have in mind, recognize that the longer you wait and delay doing your work, you are creating a gap, an opening. The door is cracked for someone else who is willing to do the work to swoop in and create that attraction with the person you have in mind. And I was not willing to have that. I was not. We were not talking because when we were initially, you know, off and on and and dealing with each other, he kept kind of ghosting me and disappearing. And he was just like, not, not, um, not committing, not really being serious, not being fully in the relationship. And, you know, you get tired of having your text left on red. You get tired of, you know, making dates and he flakes or whatever. So I had to fall back. You know, I didn't experiment. I fell back for a few weeks, didn't hear from him. So, I mean, that tells you what time it is. The attraction's not there because if it was, that wouldn't happen. So I had to accept that and go in the lab and do the work on myself. And I did that for months. But let me tell you, I had a choice. I could have fallen back and said, you know what? Um, It's either not going to work out and just gave up. Or I could have fell back and said, You know, I'll just let him come back around. I know he will. And we go through the same cycle when he popped back up in my life because it had happened a couple times that we fell out and then uh, reconnected. And we would have had the same thing play out. And what happens is someone eventually comes along who gets it. A woman who has done her work, a woman who has mastered creating that environment that is peaceful, inviting, alluring, safe, Um, that cultivating that emotional attraction that a man is looking for. And he can't help but be drawn to her like a moth to a flame. And then guess what? What do you have to, to entice him over to be with you? We think, oh, well, we have history. Oh, well, we have kids. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. A man goes where he feels good. A man goes where he feels like a man. A man goes where he feels honored, where he feels respected, where the woman's speaking to the king in him. A man goes where he has peace. If that is not with you, it doesn't matter how long he's been involved with you. It doesn't matter if y'all have kids. If that is not with you, then there is a crack in the door Or someone else to come along, someone at the job, someone who he just happens upon in his everyday comings and goings. No, you got to get his heart, sis, and lock it up. You got to be who you need to be in order to create that attraction. At this point, it's not even about what you want to do. It's about the results you want to get. Do you want this particular man? Do you want to be married? Do you want to be in a happy, harmonious relationship? There is a role you have to play. Just like there's a role you have to play at the job. You may not be able to talk to customers the way you want to. You may not be able to say everything you really think to your boss, but you recognize that there's a role you have to play. There's energy you have to bring. There's a certain way you have to behave in order to get the outcome that you want, which is getting that job, getting your paycheck, or you may hate to chastise or whoop your kids or whatever, but you know that there's a certain way you have to be as a mother to be the best mom you can to them so that they grow up to be well-balanced, disciplined, um, productive members of society. You know there's hats you have to wear. This is one of them. There's a certain hat you have to wear to have a happy, healthy relationship. A lot of women miss that. They think, I'm going to just bring what I feel like bringing to the table and you just have to take me as I am. Okay, and he, he decided not to take you. And so now you sitting here with um, your baggage, your bad attitude, 
your um, masculinity, your brokenness, your unwillingness to present your best self. You sitting here with all of that surrounding you. And guess what? He done gone on with his life. He done met somebody. Who knows what's going on? And there won't be anything you can do about it. But the good news is there is a reason why you're watching this video today. There's a reason why we're connected. There's a reason why I have devoted hundreds of hours, thousands of dollars in coaching to learn about these things and that I have a passion and a desire to share what I have learned. You are no longer ignorant to this. There are a lot of women who are ignorant to this. And even if I was to share it with them, they will turn their nose up at it. They're not trying to hear anything about being different, acting different, um, seeking mentorship, um, using a crystal or the moon or, or anything I'm talking about. But if you're here and you have ears to hear, then hear. Because I want women especially the, the dynamic, big-hearted, successful, ambitious women, women of color, women who have been single moms, women who've been craving a happy, healthy partnership for a long time. I want you to have it. I grew up in a family of single mothers. I didn't have examples of healthy relationships growing up. I've seen way too many women who go into the latter years of their life single and don't want to be. And I see plenty of women who are, like I said, smart, career-driven, uh, got created a beautiful life for themselves, but cannot seem to create a relationship for themselves. And they're on the path to being single. And as uh, Kevin Samuels would say, dying alone. And that's not what I want for y'all. That's certainly not what I wanted for me. But I didn't realize the work ahead of me in order to have a relationship. So you need somebody to tell you what it's going to take, what it's going to require. And that you got to saddle up and do it. Otherwise, recognize the path that you're on. And if you don't believe me, just look at history. What has history shown you? If you continue to do what you've done to get where you are right now, you will be in the same place. It'll just be five years later, 10 years later, 15 years later. You already know the results that what you've been doing will give you because those are the results you are living right now. Continuing to do things the same way is not the answer. That is literally insanity and you will regret it. You will remember that you had an opportunity to be brave. You had an opportunity to step out, make a different choice, change your life, reprogram your mind, take charge and not take a passive role in your own life and actually create what you want to experience to tap into your own power. We all have the power to, we create life with our bodies. We can certainly create the kind of life we want to live, but you got to be tapped in. And you can't hear that still small voice. You can't hear your intuition. You can't hear what to do next when you have all that static and chaos of the past, of the limiting beliefs. You don't want to meditate. You don't want to quiet your mind. You don't want to release the trauma. You don't want to release the, the negative thoughts, the limiting beliefs. You don't want to release the stuff from the past. You want to nurture it and nurse it and carry it around in your purse and go around your whole life with it and wonder why things aren't going how you want. How committed are you to what you want? And how badly do you want a man in your life? Because there's things that men want too. And every woman pretty much has the one thing that we think that men really want. So what would make him choose you, invest in you, create a life with you, and literally cut himself off from all other women in the world. Women who were gorgeous, women who um, he would feel like, like the man having her on his arm. Women from the past who are single and desperate and would gladly reach out 
and see what he's up to. Women who he hasn't even met yet. He's literally cutting himself off from all possibilities to devote himself, to provide, to protect, to cleave to you. You have to bring something that inspires him to do that. And it's not the things we think. It's not your good job. It's not the fact that you own your own home or you're a great mom or you have a Mercedes Benz or you have degrees or you have all of these accomplishments. It's not that. Unless you are interested in a man who just wants you for your possessions and for the tangible benefits you bring to his life, he wants to live off of you and your successes. If that's not what you're looking for, you need to look at the things that men value, the things that men are lacking, that they are looking for, an emotional safe place, peace, a woman who's agreeable, a woman who is easy to lead. Again, a woman who he experiences more peace in her presence and enjoys being in her presence more than he enjoys being alone. And most men, they enjoy solitude. They enjoy being in the man cave. They enjoy their alone time. So you really got to work to create a peaceful environment that he would want to be in. And I'm telling you, if you don't have that with your own self, a man definitely doesn't experience that with you. And you could fake it, you know, for a while. But if you get in anything long term, Eventually, the mask comes off. Eventually, you get triggered. Eventually, he gets to see the real you. So you want to have real inner peace, not fabricated. Because then you'll see the yo-yo. You'll see, oh, he was coming towards me and things were going good. And then what happened? He fell back. Things changed. I don't know. Like, did, did the mask start coming off? Did you pop off? Did you, like, what happened? Something shifted. And I'm not putting it entirely on women to make relationships work. I am pointing out that we have a lot of power and influence in how relationships go for us. Initially, it's about the physical attraction because that's all we know. When we look at somebody, we don't know their personality. We don't know their flaws or their issues or their background or whatever. We just know if we like what we see. So... Again, getting your physical together so that you can attract the type of men you want, that's step one. But then having that inner beauty to match your outer beauty is key to locking them down and having them stay. And also when you have that on deck, you know that even if you lock down a guy that you are in love with and y'all are creating a beautiful life together, you know if he ever was to walk away, you could get somebody else. And you know that without a doubt because you have what men want. You possess what men crave and desire from women and so many women delude themselves and think that it's the other stuff that I just mentioned and yet they're single for years and years and years and they're alone men aren't looking for that stuff from women it's time for us to wake up and pay attention and get back to our lane get back to what our strengths are get back to what we naturally are gifted in doing and being that men do not have. We live in a world now where we are competing with men for positions and notoriety and, you know, like we're sitting at the same table with them proving that we're just as smart and just as capable and we can do without them and blah, blah, blah. But there is a role that the feminine fulfills. There is a power that the feminine has that the masculine does not. And if we get too caught up and trying to be in a man's world and penetrate that and compete with them, then we leave our feminine role unfilled. But there are women who recognize that the feminine role needs to be filled, and those are the women who captivate men and are able to have a a pick. They're able to have several suitors who want to be serious with them, and they get to choose who. Or they're being provided for. They're being protected. They're being treated as precious and cherished if that's what you want decide that you're willing to do what it's going to take and make it happen like this is your wake up call this is your sign if you've been looking for one Um, like I said 
with my guy upstairs, I was not willing to accept that not working out. I already knew in my heart that was the person I wanted to be with. I fully committed myself. I did what I had to do. And I'll tell you, he was involved with other people during that time. We were apart, of course. I mean, he's an attractive guy. He was involved with other women. We were not talking for months. We didn't live in the same city, so we didn't run into each other. We weren't friends on social media. Like, it was complete cut off. And now he's upstairs asleep in our bedroom. And we've lived together for three years. Got engaged in December of last year. Like, we have come a super long way. And I will not sit here and make it seem like it was easy. But you got to decide, sis. Because any relationship is going to require work of you. I got a comment. Of, she said, that is what my guy loves about me. My spirit, joy, beauty, and scent when he is around me. Right. Like, there, there is something special about a woman. A real woman, the feminine, that cannot be replicated, duplicated, rivaled, um, that men just do not possess. Um and then when it's this particular guy, you want to learn him, you know, and I, I think I did a video yesterday or the day before something like that, where I was talking about certain things to not do, you know, like with the, the arguing, the being loud, the, you know, um, competing with men, bragging, just different things like that, that end up being a turnoff and you just think that you're making conversation or you're being yourself or whatever. And I say you you be the self that you need to be to get the outcome that you want. If you want a peaceful connection with your man, then you know the role you need to play. And you know the part of you that needs to show up because they're all parts of you. The mother, the wife, the employee, the boss, the chef, the nurse, the daughter, the granddaughter, the, you know, saleswoman, whatever, whatever hats you wear, they're all you, but they're not all worn at the same time. And they're not all appropriate for all of the different people that you have in your life. So you just have to understand that you may be a boss in the boardroom, but you're not going to be the boss at home or, um, you're going to find yourself being home alone. So learn to embrace that you are multifaceted, that we have layers like an onion, and figure out with the kind of men that you want, what are they looking for in a woman? And how can you start being that? Sometimes that means getting yourself together physically. Sometimes that means, a lot of times, that means getting your mind right, your vibe, and truly having it right, not just for the short term, but like for real, cultivating a true place of peace and safety and harmony within yourself. And I have gone on a rant. Let me see, was there anything else in my notes that I haven't said? Yeah, I had um, a little bit more, but I'll probably do a separate video on that because um, I got a question about like a man who you just met and you're talking to him and he says, oh, call me, text me tomorrow and you text him and then he takes forever getting back to you. Like, is that a sign of him not being interested? Should you cut him off? You know, like what should you do about that situation? And my perspective on that is you're always letting a man lead. And Gigi said, I embrace letting him lead. I want peace in my environment. Yes. So I'm talking about that very thing. Um, you let him lead. Okay. So you'll know whether he's interested or not by how he pursues you. But if you keep reaching out to him, you won't know how he really feels because you're the one starting it. And there are some men who will even tell you, oh, I want you to call me more, text me more. It's okay to just flat out say, you know, in general, like, I feel uncomfortable doing that because I feel like, you know, I'm bothering you or I just, 
you know, I, it feels kind of masculine. It feels like I'm pursuing you and, um, you know, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Whatever you need to tell him, you know, I can give you some actual scripts to use in your situations if, if that comes up based on what the man is saying to you. But men think that they want you to pursue them until you do it. And they get flattered and it lasts all the five seconds and then you become a bother and then you're bugging them and then you're looking desperate and it's unattractive and they leave you on red. That's what happens. So that's why you don't listen to that. Don't let a man tell you, I want you to pick out the date. I want you to call me, text me more. Do not do it. A man... He may not be used to being in his masculine because in this day and age, a lot of women are initiating contact and dates and taking the lead and being in the masculine position. So he may have become accustomed to that, but you can invite him back into his masculine energy by you being in your feminine energy and letting him lead, letting him do 80% of the initiating of the um, starting contact, letting him plan things, letting him let you know when he would like to get together instead of you hitting him up to ask if he wanted to get together with you he will reach out men are leaders they are initiators if there's a woman they want to see they're going to reach out if you don't hear from him you need to be so busy that you have other plans and you're not worried about it if you're sitting at home looking at the phone wondering why he hasn't called or made plans this weekend, you need to fill your life with more things. You need to be dating other men. You need to have a rotation. Or you need to be busy with your own personal projects and things like that that you are excited and feel good about that you're looking forward to. And if you are in a committed relationship and he's not stepping forward, then it's time for a conversation where you make what your needs are known. And then you see what happens. If he doesn't step up, you start pulling back. Because there's no point in being in a relationship where both partners are not willing to meet each other's needs unless you decide you want to wait it out. If you want to wait it out and you're that committed, then you're going to have to do what it's going to take to encourage yourself to wait it out. That's kind of what I did. It was hard. It was not easy. You know, now he's much more willing to meet what my needs are but for a long time he wasn't I was super committed to relationship and I had to go without for a while now if you are already not in love with somebody and committed to somebody I wouldn't advise doing that because you have options why would you why pull a a stubborn man along the road of commitment when you could get a man who's more than happy and willing to usher you through those stages that's more ideal So, again, I wouldn't advise that unless you're in a situation where you already are settled on somebody, in which case you're just going to have to buckle up and do what you got to do, you know, and endure and and lean on your spirituality, lean on your skills to manifest, lean on your support system, your coach, you know, your community of women, whatever you got to do to get through it. I mean, that's what I had to do. So, um, let me see. Yeah, and dating multiple men is what helps you to not have that desperate energy because you're being filled up by multiple men. If you don't have one principal man in your life who's giving you what you desire from relationship, then you get a little bit from a lot of different men. And that's another plus of having a rotation of several different men. You're not looking for any one particular guy to call you because someone's always calling you. Someone's always texting you. And I was telling my friend, you'll know when you have enough, when you have times where you're like, I don't feel like talking to anybody tonight. I don't feel like going on a date. I've been going on dates all week. I've been talking on the phone all week. Tonight, I just want to put on my sweatpants and pull my hair back or put my bonnet on and watch Netflix and eat ice cream or whatever I need to do. I want to snuggle up with a good book and just be with myself. Because I have been busy. I've been ripping and running and talking to and mingling with people and I'm good. Then you know you're full. Then you're not going to come off desperate to any one guy because you have a surplus of male attention. And you're good. 
But when you don't, and you only have one guy you're talking to, you are gonna come across as needy. Just your energy, you don't even have to say anything. He will tell, he'll be able to tell that you're not really talking to or dealing with nobody else, you're always available, you don't have anything much going on, there isn't any competition, and there's just nothing exciting or incentivizing about that. So I would seriously advise against um, just dating one person at a time. It's not beneficial for you, and it does not cultivate more attraction or motivate the man to step up and claim you. Okay. Um, another way you'll tell if, if a man is good for you is how do you feel around him? Now, this is key. Um, you need to be doing your inner work. Because if you feel anxious around a man, sometimes you don't know if it's him causing the anxiety or you. Sometimes we blame the man when really it was you. It's your own stuff that you haven't healed. It's your own triggers. But in general, if you have a relationship where you feel more on edge than you feel at peace, if it's very up and down roller coaster, if you're constantly worried about if he's going to leave, if he's going to treat you right, is he going to do something that's going to hurt you, is he like is is your stomach always kind of churning and turning and your anxiety is on a high you're constantly worried you're bracing for when the next shoe is going to drop or when you're going to be disappointed you want to look at that because how you feel is important and how you're feeling in the relationship is directly correlated to what you continue to attract when you feel good, you're able to attract good. You attract more of what you are and where you're at. If you're feeling anxious, you're going to attract more things to be anxious about. So that's another reason to get your mind right, to meditate, to start clearing out some of that negative energy because you're attracting more of it. And you do have control over what you attract into your life. And... Yeah, the last thing I'll say is um, if you want to know the role you've played in your previous relationships, just kind of take a look at the dynamics. Look at the role that you've played in, let's just say, your last three relationships. Were you more of the mother? Were you the one that had it all together and you were saving him? Did you not have a voice? Did your wants and needs not matter? Were you abused? Were you more abandoned? Were you the leader? Were you the one um, making the, rowing the boat, if you will? Were you the one that was initiating all of the contact, all of the quality time, um, the dates? Have you been the one making everything happen? Um, how did you feel very often? You know, just really examine what your roles were. And that'll kind of point you to some of the work that you need to do, because obviously, even though that may be familiar to you, that's probably not what you want. You want to be that cherished, precious, protected, provided for, um, loved on wife that the man just can't get enough of. He's just, you know, addicted to you in the best way, um, super devoted to you. You feel great about yourself. You feel um, like the queen in your castle and you feel like you've got a king. And you both feel blessed and happy to have each other. And even though there's work involved in the relationship, you're willing to do the work because it's worth it. Um, you want to look at how far off your previous relationships were from that. And that's your starting point of what you need to do so that your next relationship can be better and closer to your ideal. So that's all I have for you ladies tonight. Thank you for those of you that stayed. I think it's Tenny and Gigi that stayed. So thank you both. Thanks for listening to me go on and on. And as always, I am here for y'all. My honey just got up. He's been asleep. So I'm going to see what um, we're going to do for dinner. Well, it's kind of late, but I haven't eaten. So I'm going to see what we're going to do for the rest of the night. And I love you all. As always, if you need support, if you have questions, if you are in a relationship crisis, if you're trying to get back out there and dating and you need um, guidance or mentorship around that, please reach out. My DM is always open. I have my Flexure Femininity group. Um, 
we have a shaman in there who has made herself available for discounted healings. We have a woman who sells crystals that I have purchased from and they are super high quality and real and you can use those for healing. Um, I'm working on bringing in some other specialists to offer their services at a discounted rate in addition to the coaching. Um, I just added a couple new people to the group, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I mean, it's going to be great. We're, we're healing and um, breaking curses, generational and personal, and leveling up and getting the love that we want and that we deserve. So um, join the party. If you feel called, we would love to have you. And y'all have a wonderful evening and a great weekend. And I will see you soon. Bye.